Hello and welcome to Virtue of Tech. In this video, we're going to be doing a first look and review of this 6 LAN port mini router PC. Um, it has an Intel x86 um, Pentium Gold 8505 CPU. That is a 5 core CPU. It's got 4 efficiency cores and 1 performance core, which also comes with 2 threads. So you do have 6 threads in here overall. And this is a 12th gen CPU with support for dual channel RAM. Um, DDR4 or DDR5, the one that I've picked up over here, is DDR5, dual channel, NVMe as well. This is a pretty specialized PC, but it is a mini PC, so you can run Linux, Ubuntu, CentOS, Fedora, which is which is pretty cool. Um, if you're looking to buy something like this, um, you probably know what you need it for, but um, some of the more generalized applications for this is OpenSense, FP Sense, and yeah, other networking type applications as well. It's well built. It, it feels really solid actually. Um, it's all aluminum and it's really well built. Um, it feels solid. Really impressed by that actually. Um, it's semi passive, so it, it does have its own aluminum um, fin stack fin stack over here, and it does have a fan. But you you can't turn the fan off in the BIOS, but you can just you can unplug it if you really wanted to or or reduce the uh, fan speed to basically silent. I will be doing some benchmarking on this as well, just to show you how capable the CPU is. You can pick these up with an Intel N100 or an N305. Um, in this case, it's a Pentium Gold 8305, but they also have this with the 12th gen or 11th gen i3, i5, i7 variants as well. Now, let me show you what comes in the box and then we can move over to the benchmarking and tests. So starting off, you get the mini router PC. You're also getting a power cord, and in this case, I've got the UK power cord. And then you've got the power brick. Um, it's branded Delta Electronics. So if it's genuine, it should be good quality. And then you've got some rubber feet as well as some screws. And finally, you've got a SATA power and data cable. Opening it up, um, on the top side, you've got the fan. Taking a closer look at the fan, um, you do have a semi-passive design. Um, you can't turn off the fan in the BIOS, but you can reduce it to near silent. And if you really want to turn it off, you can always just unplug the cable inside. It, it feels okay. Um, it seems similar to what you would see on a graphics card, really. Maybe some of those graphics cards from MSI. Now, taking a closer look inside, um, I do have the bare bone unit, which means it doesn't come with any NVMe drive or um, any RAM, nor does it come with any uh, Wi-Fi card. So just going through it, um, you've got the six Intel i two two six LAN connect uh, LAN ports, as well as a um, a slot for a Wi-Fi Bluetooth adapter and then a PCIe Gen 4 NVMe drive as well. So now I'm going to be installing the RAM. DDR5. Um, this is a 56,000 megahertz kit, but this um, setup only supports up to 4,800 megahertz. Um, RAM compatibility might be hit or miss because I did try another Samsung 48,000 megahertz kit and it just it did not work. But this um, but this faster RAM kit um, it is working, but it does get reduced to only 48,000 megahertz in the BIOS. Um, PCIe Gen 4 NVMe drive as well. Getting that installed in there, it's only 512 gigabytes. And then that's it. That's all you need. I've got the mini Vada PC over here. Just takes one cable. I'm also going to be plugging in an Ethernet cord as well, so I've got networking. And I'm also going to be plugging in my keyboard. So I've got everything plugged in now and I am booted into Windows 11. 
desktop is working. And like I was saying earlier, this is basically a mini PC, but for more specific use cases, the six Intel Ethernet ports as well, they are working. Let me show you that. So networking. Yep, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Um, I'm connected to the networking port six, but all of them are there, they're all working. So taking a look at CPU-Z, you can see the core speed of 4.3 gigahertz and then one performance core for energy efficiency cores. Uh, max TBD 15 watts, but um, it does actually go a bit higher. Um, it can go up to uh, 55 watts and maybe even higher when I was playing around with the BIOS. Um, you were able to set it higher, but I don't know if that would actually have an effect or if it's just a, a placeholder. Mainboard, memory, so see the memory here and then the graphics as well. Intel UHD with 48 execution units and that is more than what you get in an Intel N100 and 200, even the Intel N305. You do have more execution units. Um, I wouldn't buy something something like this to game on, but but if you do happen to find the CPU in other machines, um, I will run a few benchmarks for you. The first one that I want to do is Cinebench, just to show you the sort of performance you can expect out of the Intel 8505. And this is the 2024 version, um, which works a bit differently to the 2023 version that a lot of other benchmarkers may have been using. So I did run it before, but um, since running this, I did do a performance. Um, I did tune the performance a bit in the BIOS, increase the, um, I, I changed it to max performance and then the power plan in Windows as well. I changed it from balance to high performance. I think this might give me a higher result. So I will run it again in multi-core. So the benchmark has finished now and taking a look at it, I did get a score of 290 points. I'm, I'm quite happy with that actually. Um, I don't know how it stacks up, but the overall responsiveness of the system, it, it, it is really good because you are getting that one performance call. Moving on from Cinebench, um, I want to organize a esports event for Smash Carts and I need your support for this to happen. So if you can, subscribe to this channel and it would help out a lot if you can also sign up over at our website www.virtualup.com getting more users on there would make it much easier for me to start organizing these esport events there will of course be prize money up for grabs as well so please sign up and um, i do want to see how this performs as well in this game and yeah it does look like 60 frames per second and the game runs just fine it's a great game you should check it out um, it's on mobile it's on pc another game that i wanted to check out was slime rancher this is a game that i've played back in the day and it, it runs quite well and um, you can just run it at 1080p 720p you, you should get higher frames So if I just continue from where I left off. So yeah, everything at its lowest at 1080p resolution. And the game runs just fine. No problems there. Another game that I'm going to be trying out is Apex Legends. Ever since Intel released their Arc series of GPUs, they have been more focused on getting their GPU drivers on par with Nvidia and AMD. This is going to firing range. Ready. So this is running at 720p and then everything is pretty much sent to low. Um, let's just disable vSync here. I did increase the texture streaming budget, just um, may help with responsiveness. 
So you're you're not really getting a full 60 frames per second experience right now. It is at f around 45 frames per second, but I, personally, I feel dizzy when I'm playing this. I don't know if it's the low frame rate or if it's just something else. It doesn't feel super responsive, but it is playable. So if you are a bit of a gamer and you are looking for a mini PC, I will be doing a separate review of this. So make sure you subscribe as you wouldn't want to miss out on this. Um, it does have an engineering sample CPU and picked up at a great price on AliExpress. The final game that I'm going to be checking out is GTA 5. This runs well. You get around 60 frames per second. Sometimes it might drop to around 55. Sometimes you might get around 60, 70 frames or even 80 frames per second, just depends on what you're doing. Um, but you do have to run this at 720p resolution. It's an old game, but judging by how it looks, um, it, it looks good. Intel has come a long way when it comes to integrated GPUs. So I've got GTA 5 running over here, and this is at 720p and it, everything. Where do I get there? and everything is set to low. Everything's at normal, in some cases, is the lowest it will go. At last, I've got you. And yeah, you know, you are as you can see here, the game does work, but it does play. So is Yusuf Amir. So this is a very special occasion. And let me just show you that you also get playable frame rates outside. So you're not getting the best gaming experience, 720p doesn't look great, but it is smooth and it is playable. Now, I will be happy to play. So running above 60 frames per second right now, I will be happy to play a game like this. It looks okay as well. But once again, if you if you are looking to buy something like this for gaming, get something else. So how do I actually feel about this? Um, the real use case for this is more specialized applications using it as a router, such as using this as a mini router or for specialized applications like PFSense or OpenSense. I did want to show you that it, this does have an x86 CPU inside, so you can use it to run Windows and Ubuntu, Fedora, CentOS, all these other applications as well. Um, I guess you can also use it for emulation and as a media server as well for transcoding videos. This, sh this should handle it well. Now the reason why I got this is um, there was something cool that I just wanted to check out where you can monetize 5G broadband. So I did pick up three of these uh, 5G hubs. This is just to fill in my own curiosity on whether monetizing 5G is, is worth it or not. Um, you do get rewarded in like a cryptocurrency for doing it, although you can't really spend it right now. So, you know, I, I thought it was a cool project um, and it's not really the design for use case for something like this. But there's also a written review over at our website. You'll find that in the description below. And thank you for watching.